Hi everybody, this is Lara at PureElliotWave.com. I'm going to update my silver analysis with you. I haven't done, looked at these charts for a while, I've just been focusing on gold. I still think this is the right chart for silver, probably at the monthly chart level. And so far, this is pretty much how price is behaving. It had a bounce up to test just below this resistance line here. Now for the last four months it's been moving lower, so the question is what structure is happening in here. If I can get the structure in here right, then I can calculate some targets for the shorter term. Let's take a look at this. Well, I've got a second monthly chart here, which is bullish. This also expected more downward movement, so the question would be, is it over? And does C fit as an ending diagonal? Let's have a quick look at that on this monthly chart. Probably not. Yeah, you want to label it like this, but I think this isn't going to work. Three would have to be over there. One. Oh no, it does work. One. Three is longer than one. Four is longer than two. Five is longer than three. And the trend lines diverge, actually. Yeah, that could be. Mm. Don't like the look of that, though, because it's got this overshoot here of the one three trend line. Elliott wave diagonals tend to adhere quite strictly to their trend lines, like triangles. Elliott wave ones, that is, which is different from classic analysis tri uh, triangles and wedges. Okay, let's go back to this main chart. Let's have a look at this at the weekly chart level. I want to label primary one over here. Is this going to fit as a leading diagonal? No, I want to put this here. Oh no, that's a truncation. Uh, leading diagonals can't end with their fifth wave truncated, but could it have been like this? Oh yeah, so 3 is shorter than 1, 4 is shorter than 2, and 5 is shorter than 3. Do the trend lines work? Yeah, they do okay. Okay, so that has a good look. So if that was cycle 1, this could be cycle 2. Essentially the same analysis as I have for gold. But I think I will have this a double zigzag, not a single zigzag for cycle two. Doesn't really matter now because it's obviously over, but I think a single zigzag will have a pretty, uh, sorry, double, have a pretty good look. It's, that's going to be my way in for count for silver. This is my preferred wave count. This is my final target. So this fits with my rather bearish wave count for gold, for which I've been denigrated quite substantially over the years and is kind of a reason why I don't analyse that on a daily basis anymore. I just lost the heart for it to be honest after all the negativity for that analysis which is turning out so far because it's been really bearish for a long time so far it's turning out to be about right. I'm going to figure out where to put my invalidation point here. 26.832 could it be there? I might be able to move it lower. And that was negativity, not just from social media, it was also from within my membership. Oddly, like, guys, why? Still happens every now and then when gold goes up. They don't think my wave count's right. When gold goes down, they're silent. So, okay, I'll take it. Um, okay, so... Primary one, I mean, it could be over here. I think I want to look at classic analysis to decide that. I don't really like trying to call a low down here. Let's have a look at the daily chart. This best fit channel I had drawn back here in 2021, that worked really well. Just extended out a little bit. When it was breached, on oh, this would have been the first day, 8th of October 2021, it would have told us there had been a, quite a substantial trend change and price did move a lot higher. So that was handy. If you'd use that. So the question I want to answer is primary wave one over? I think I want to label, yeah. Oh, look, this is a really good looking expanded flat here for intermediate two. 
Minor A is a 3, you know, I think. A, B. Or you could label it like this, or you could label it like this. Either way is going to be right. I'm going to label it like that with minor B and expanded flat. And then I think minor C is going to look like a pretty good impulse. Yeah, great. That's really satisfying. Um, I think intermediate 4 looks probably like a double zigzag. I'm not going to worry too much about those subdivisions because I want to spend a little bit of time. Let's expand this out. On intermediate five, could this structure be complete? Could the low be in? And then we'll move over to classic technical analysis to try and help answer the question. Okay, well the first thing I notice is I don't want three there. I want that here. And I want four here. And I think I have to have one here. And two here. Maybe. And I think this third wave is going to have a pretty good look. The middle of it subdivides nicely. Beautiful, good looking impulse. Now I know the proportions here between minute 2 and minor 2 aren't great, but one thing I've noticed about silver over the years is it just doesn't always have great proportion. And that's one reason why I actually really dislike analysing this market for Elliott Wave that is, it's just so difficult. Okay, so it could be over, let's put that on the actual low, thank you, that's better, 18.153. Um, my bullish wave count, this could be over as well, we could be looking for a trend change, so that, I'm not going to update that daily chart, let's just, let's just leave it at the monthly chart for this one. So the bullish wave count sees the bear market ending, ending now for silver and a third wave at cycle degree could, begin, could be beginning. The bullish wave count considers a super cycle C wave to continue lower. Sadly though, the price point which differentiates the two is 11.03, quite a long way away. So if 11.703 is breached, then my target would be 7.46, but that's not really very useful because price at the moment is, what, 18.818. So that confidence point or the price point that differentiates the two ideas is just too far away to be of any real use. Mm, can I... Well, to the upside, the price point which differentiates the two ideas is also far away, 26.832. If that price point is breached, the bearish count is invalidated, the bullish count is confirmed. Because primary 2 may not move beyond the start of primary 1 above that price point. Let's draw a channel around primary wave 1 and we'll use that as indication of when primary 1 is over and primary 2 is underway. So we'll use Elliot's first technique from 1 to 3 with a copy on 2. That actually works beautifully. What a nice looking channel. I'm just going to spend a moment geeking out on that channel. I really like it. So this may provide resistance. If it doesn't, if this is breached, then price is either in a primary degree second wave bounce or a cycle degree third wave. So it's bullish, but we won't know how bullish until we see either a complete bounce in a, in a corrective structure, probably a zigzag for primary two, or we see a new high above 26.832. So I'm going to put a big fat question mark down here. I'm going to put a big question mark down here. The question mark is, is there a sustained, sustainable low in place? And to answer that question, we need to see this resistance line breached by a full daily candlestick above and not touching this line. If that happens, then I will have confidence in this labeling. As that has not yet happened, the question mark will remain. It is possible. Price could continue lower. Let's have a look at some classic analysis and try and answer the question, how much lower? It's in a zone of previous resistance and support, 18.5 to 19. If it can comfortably close below 18.5, then next support below 16.05 to 15.65, the next zone. So while it's still above, oh, this should actually say support, I'm sorry, this shouldn't say resistance because it hasn't closed below this zone. 
So we could see some consolidation here resistance above 22.5. The volume profile is bearish. This supports the main Elliott wave count. As price is falling, volume is actively pushing price lower. When price rises, volume is very light. Price is falling, volume is actively pushing price lower. This little doji, this is not a full week, so you can't draw any conclusions about this week volume because it's only got, I think, probably only one or two sessions. On balance volume broke below support back here. That was a really strong bearish signal and price still continued sideways and now it's broken below support. So that was a really helpful signal from on balance volume back here. RSI is neutral. It's probably just dipped into oversold territory. It's returned back to neutral. And so if this downward trend is nearing an end or it needs a big interruption before it continue, can continue, I'd expect that end to this downward trend or a big interruption to now come sooner rather than later. ADX indicates a downward trend at the weekly chart level that's not yet extreme. Stochastics is oversold and I just want to show the correlation coefficient here for you between gold and silver. Back here it was actually an this is neutral, the shaded area is neutral, but it was below zero, so on the side of negative, but not actually statistically significantly negative. It is most commonly positive, but the correlation coefficient history of these two sets of data shows that they are not always correlated. So any correlation they may have from time to time absolutely must be understood to be unreliable. They are currently positively correlated, very strongly positively. That could break down at any time, so you just can't rely on it. At the daily chart level, a little bit of resistance, probably about 19. There's no bullish candlestick at this low, and volume is declining as price is printing green candlesticks. This volume profile is bearish. Price is falling, volume is pushing price lower, and again here for this. There's no indication of a sustainable low. ADX indicates an extreme downward trend, but it's not very extreme yet, and it's not extreme at the weekly chart level. This looks like a counter trend movement, not the start of a new bullish trend. ATR is overall flat as price falls. On balance volume is constrained, giving us no signal. If we could get a break above the yellow resistance line, that would be a weak bullish signal. A break below the purple support line would be a weak bearish signal. So watch out for that from on balance volume. It may precede a breakout in price. If it does, it's a very useful signal. If it breaks out at the same time as price, then it provides confirmation and confidence to a price breakout. RSI reached oversold here. It's back in neutral territory. There was no bullish divergence at this low between price and RSI, so no useful signal there. It, I would actually consider, it looks like we're probably going to see another downward, a new low, and maybe a final fifth wave, and then maybe RSI will exhibit bullish divergence. So I'd be looking for that. If it doesn't, price could keep on going lower. It could also have found its low here, an interim low or a sustainable low. It's, doesn't we don't always see divergence at highs and lows between price and RSI when we see it it adds confidence to a view of a trend change but just because it doesn't exist doesn't mean there can't be a trend change I know it's a really difficult aspect to really wrap your head around we're dealing with an exercise of probability here not certainty stochastics returning to neutral but the market is trending so we use RSI, not stochastics. And again, the correlation coefficient here at the daily chart level shows a strong positive correlation at the moment between gold and silver. But as the price history of these two sets of data shows, that could absolutely break down at any time. Let's jump back to the Elliott Wave analysis. I think my bottom line is this looks like most likely another small correction within an ongoing downward trend. I'd expect the trend could be over here. Big question mark over that though. If it's not over here, I would expect it to be over sooner rather than later. And this is what I would use to indicate a trend change, a breach of this resistance line. Okay, that's it from me with an update of my silver analysis for the first time in a very, very long time. 
I hope someone finds this useful. This was requested by one of my members and I thought it would be a good idea because I haven't done it for so long. So thank you so much for watching. If you've got to the end of this uh, very boring video, <laughs> unless you're geeky like me and you like it. And thank you so much for your support.